Hey there. In this video, we're going to be looking at annotating events in a line chart using some DAX. So wait, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is let's say that we, let's come over here to this chart page, right? Let's say that we've got a line chart like this, right? So this is a time series, right? So we've got all these months, right? And we've got the sales for each month, but maybe there's some events that uh, sort of are informative here, right? Like maybe something happened on a certain day and we want to be able to leave a note in the chart so when decision makers hover over that that day, or in this case, that month, they see, uh, they get that little piece of information that will help them see, oh, here's why sales spiked that day, or here's why sales slumped that day, right? Add some annotations. So it's actually not too hard to do here, and one of the nice things about this solution is we're not using a custom visual, we're doing this all with the, the in-stock uh, visual library, which is nice, because those tend to be, you know, really well maintained. Okay, so I'm going to, before I dig into the DAX, why don't I just show you the data that underlies this? So for this time series data, we've got we've got two columns. We've got a month label and total sales. Total sales is pretty obvious. The thing that's interesting about month label is that we're uh, here. You can see that we're not doing this on a day by day basis. We're doing this on a month by month basis. And so for this month, we're just using the first of the month. And for this month, we're just using the first of the month. And we go on like that, right? So this technique will work uh, in other situations, but that's just going to uh, inform a little bit of how we do the DAX later on. So I just wanted to point that out here. So let's head back over to the chart page. And we're going to twirl open fields, and we're going to start, uh, start creating us some DAX. So we're going to hover over the sales column. We're going to right click, and we're going to do measure, new measure. And the name of this new measure is going to be called note. This is the actual annotation that's going to show up in our in our tooltip. Okay, so I'm going to do Shift Enter, right? Create a new line break. I'm going to do Switch. Okay, so what Switch does is Switch is like a hyper-powered if. What it lets you do is it lets you uh, evaluate some expression, and that expression can have you know any number of uh, answers, any number of uh, values that come back, and this will let you say, hey, if it's this value, do this. If it's this value, do this. If it's this value, do this. It's actually super duper convenient. So uh, what's the first uh, what's the first argument? Well, the first argument is uh, what what's the thing we want to evaluate? So we're going to take the max of the sales month label, right? That was that column that has the the actual month in it, right? And we know, we know it's the month because it's got this little pop-up that happens afterwards. We're going to hit space and close out the parentheses and hit comma. Now let's stop for a second and think about what we're saying here. We're saying, hey, for each one of these each one of these points in the line graph, go get the the maximum of the of the month label, right? And so, you know, go go find the maximum date. Well, for each one of these, it happens on exactly one day. That's how it's sort of stored. So if we say, hey, what is the maximum day for this day? Well, it's just going to be that day. So what we're really asking is, you know, what day is it on? Right? That's sort of fundamentally what we're getting at. Okay? So that's what we're asking. And now I'm going to do Shift Enter. So what do we want to do? Well, we're just going to say we have two annotations, one on December 1st of 2015 and one on the 1st of March for 2015. A store opening and spring break happening. That's all we care about. So let's say for the um, our first annotation happens on December 1st, 2015. So you'd be tempted to type in 12 slash 1 slash 2015. And that's actually, sorry, 2015. That's most of the way there. Um, but this is just a text string, right? And we're going to compare this to an actual uh, date, which is what we get back here. So what we have to do is convert this text string into a date. Pretty easy to do. We're just going to use the value function. The value function, what does that do? It takes a text string that looks like either a number or a date and it converts it into an either a number or a date. Okay, perfect. So we say, all right, if it's if we're hovering over the first of 2015, what do we want the tooltip to say? Here we're just going to say Belmont store comes online. Right? Perfect. Whatever you want to type, obviously. Then so we're going to add a comma. Shift enter. We're going to do value. Say, all right, what's our second annotation? Our second annotation happens on 3 1 2015. Right? Close out the value call there. See, let's add a little, add a little white space. Oop, that's not what I want to do. Right there. Doop. We're going to add a little white space, make it a little easier to read. Boom. Okay. And on the on that date, we're just going to say that uh, spring break happened. It doesn't really matter. We're just trying to illustrate the idea here. So we want spring break to be our, our uh, annotation for that month. So we're going to hit comma. And uh, the last argument, the last argument basically is always going to be, what do you have, what do you want to happen, have happen if the max month label is none of these things? 
what if what day it is on is not this one or this one, right? It's just not in the list. Well, in that case, we're just going to return blank, right? Don't return anything. Don't return zero. Don't return you know, nothing like that. Return absolutely nothing at all. Perfectly what we want. That's why it's not going to show up on these other days. So I'm going to do shift enter, get backspace to go all the way back. And I'm going to close out my switch statement. And I am done with the hardest part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And here's where we cross our fingers and hope that we wrote this thing correctly. We're going to click on our chart and we're going to drag note to the tool tips field well. Right? And now, for most of the months, you'll see that all you do is get the total sales. But if you hover over one of the months that has an actual annotation, boom, there you see. See where it says note? There you get your annotation there, right? And if we go find the, the next annotation, there we go. There's the next annotation. Okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, this is really nice, and this will actually work on any chart. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you uh, doesn't doesn't work all the time. There's like one specific instance that I'll show you where it doesn't work, but it works most of the time, and it's really nice. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us have these little red dots over where the events happen. That way it's easy for decision makers to see where the annotations actually are. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and add that. That's going to be a new measure. We're going to hover over our sales table. We're going to right click and do new measure. And we're going to call this one event, right? Event. Uh, now the event is pretty simple. It's going to be an if statement. And we're going to check the len or the length of the uh, note measure. So we're going to say, hey, how many characters long is our annotation? And if there's any annotation at all, it's going to be at least one character, right? And if it's at least one character, this is going to return true. So what we're really asking here is, is there a note where we're at right now? If there is a note, go ahead and return total sales. Okay. If there's not a note, return blank. Right. So we're basically we're saying, hey, um, show the total anywhere there's a note, show the total sales. Anywhere there's there's not a note, don't show anything at all. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter, close that measure out. Now I'm just going to change the formatting string to match the uh, total sales measure. So let's twirl this guy open. Let's click on total sales. We say it's currency general. Uh, I'm going to increase that to zero. I always prefer zero there. So now I'm going to click on my new um, event measure, right? And I'm going to change it from currency general to currency with uh, zero trailing, zero trailing there. And now what I could do is uh, take my event, grab my graph, and drag this after total sales. Boom. And now we can see we've got these dots over where all the events are. And here, this actually makes sense. The legend actually tells them, hey, anywhere there's a dot, there's an event. Hover over it, see what happened. Hey, the Belmont store came online. Okay, uh, now, oftentimes, depending on the nature of the chart, if these, uh, these events aren't a super big deal, this purple is just different enough than this blue that's actually kind of good. But let's say that it's really important that you draw attention to these things. Well, the one color that draws the most attention to the eye is always uh, pure red. Right? And we happen to have that one right here, so we're going to click on that. Now, if it's uh, not a super big deal, what these events aren't a super big deal, I wouldn't use pure red because you want to reserve pure red for very important things. Because if there's pure red on a, on a report, the, the user's eyes are going to drift right to there immediately. And if there's pure red all over a report, a user's not going to know where to look. So use it sparingly. But let's say in this instance, we, this is really important, so we want the events to pop out in red. Well, there we go. So now, uh, anywhere there's uh, not an event, nothing happens, and you hover over the event, boom, you get a description of what happened on that day. So I did say earlier that there is a situation where this doesn't work perfectly, and that happens when, let's twirl this x-axis open, we change the axis here from categorical to continuous. Um, if you're not a stats major, this doesn't really make any sense to you. It's not really super important. Uh, the one thing you're going to care about maybe is that um, if you want to have trend lines, you need to have a continuous access, and so that's going to cause us to break. So watch this. Boom. There we go. What it's going to do is it's going to draw a line between each one of those events. Oh, no, that's not what we want. So that's the only real bummer about this is it doesn't work there, but most of the time you don't really need it, and all you have to do is come over here to your uh, x-axis type and switch it from continuous to categorical, and boom, it works perfectly fine. Okay, well, I do uh, sure hope that was helpful for you, and I will see you next video.